Welcome to The Kitchen Table, a conversation about faith, music, and culture. Join Shine.fm's ministry director, Brian McIntyre Utter, and his son, Jake, around the table for this week's chat. Welcome to The Kitchen Table. My name is Jake. And I'm Brian. And we are so glad to have you back for another episode of The Kitchen Table. A quick rundown of how and why we started this show. I went to college. And now I am a junior, which is, well, technically I'm a junior. I haven't started my junior year, but I just finished sophomore year, which is really crazy. But we started this to have conversation of faith over the kitchen table, even though we've never done it over a kitchen table. We're over the cardboard table right now. We're on a card table now, yeah. (laughs) We wanted to have these faith discussions, but we also wanted to encourage young adults and parents to have faith discussions of their own. And so why not put that in the podcast form? Why not? Why not? That's why we started it. A quick rundown of how we set up the show. We start with our faith discussion, talking about just whatever we want to talk about this week. A lot of it's been COVID-19 talk because that's our life right now, but we can talk about a bunch of faith issues issues and just kind of controversy of just what is biblical and what is worldly. That is kind of our first 20 to 30 minutes of the show. And then we move into a segment called Music Matters. And in Music Matters, we simply put, talk about music because we think music matters. And the third part. And then we move into Culture Shock. And Culture Shock, we basically look at someone in culture who's making a difference for the kingdom. Now we sometimes will highlight uh, an athlete or a movie star or just some some semi-famous person. Or we talk about someone making a difference in your community. The average Joe Schmo. Like how I set you up for that? Yeah, I know. I like it. Okay, so let's dive into our topic for today. Oh, by the way, if you, uh, we're actually not in the studio today. We're in our. We said that already. We're at the the card table. We're at the card table, the home studio. So if you hear the slight sound of a lawnmower, it's our our neighbor. Our house isn't soundproof when it comes to the windows that we have in our house, just like yours. Uh, You might hear a lawnmower here or there, or maybe a bird tweeting. (laughs) Just, yeah, whatever you can do. So this week, something that is inevitable right now in all of our lives, and I don't want to talk about COVID-19, but of course, that's the lens through which we see things right now. But I do want to talk about something specific. Change. This changes everything. Yeah. We know that there is going to be, there. The, the phrase new normal has been thrown out a lot, but we want to talk about change. So this week in the Shine staff meeting, I had three questions I posed to our staff because I wanted us to start reflecting on this. The first question is, and I want to ask this to you. Just think about your life, Jake. What are you doing today that you weren't doing March 1st? Community, being with people. You're not, okay, so you're not doing that. Yeah, I'm not doing community or being with people. Yeah, you're living at home again. I am living at home again. (laughs) I'm not in my dorm, which it's kind of like a win Win-win situation because I get home-cooked meals again and I don't have to live in a dorm. That's not. There's give that's and take. That's not the sad. That's not the sad. Give um, and take. But yeah, I'm not on campus. I I wouldn't be in class right now anyway. But yeah. I'm not in class or I haven't been in class. A lot of my meetings. Right now, I would be starting to get ready for prep weeks for ministry teams. Yeah. That's delayed. Not, it's delayed. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the other question I asked is, what are you doing now that doesn't make sense? Sitting at home, doing nothing. Okay. When you think about like your jobs and your ministries, whatever you're doing, there are certain things now as, as you evaluate it that probably don't make sense because there has to be a shift yeah. in how you do things. Well, I think, I mean, we've both been helping out with the church and, yeah. like, and doing video which it's always made sense to us, but I think to some people in church, it hasn't made sense of like, oh. Well, th- think about all these churches, and we'll get to that part uh, towards the end of this podcast, but think about all those organizations, businesses, churches that are having to completely change the way they do things. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, every pastor has been thrown into understanding how to communicate on social media in yeah. whatever form that looks like. There are certain things that don't make sense. We ask ourselves that as a staff. What are we doing now that doesn't make sense? You know, this is the way we did it before, but now it doesn't make sense. Third question I asked is, what should we be doing more of that is new and different? Again, if you're a business owner, if you are in an organization, or if you're with a church, ask that question, what should you be doing more of now that is new and different? We have to ask those questions, That's right? A hard one. You know, for, for us as a staff, we talked about reaching out more. Yeah. 
How do we reach out more when you have to socially distance? And we talked about creating new ways of engaging people when you can't physically do that. And I think everyone is kind of asking themselves, how do we do that today? You know, those three questions come down to what we want to talk about today, which is change. Because let's face it, this has changed everything. And many people think, oh, well, it, just get back to work, get back to normal. No, it's it's going to be a That's change. Be Jake, you were just a toddler when it happened. But when 9-11 happened, there was a new normal that was established. Yeah. You did not go, you cannot go today with your family to the gate of the airplane. Yeah, you talked about that. And I'm like, wait, To what? send them off. Yes, you used to be able. There was no security. There was no TSA. At the airport, you had your identification, you go up, you get your ticket, you turn in your luggage, and then you walk with your family to the gate, yeah. and then you do your goodbyes there, and you get on the plane. That's crazy. Now everything changed. There is a new normal. And so on the other side of this, there's going to be a new normal as well. So post-coronavirus perspective of life, life is fragile, <laughs> and life is random, and change happens. So more than anything, uh, when you ask somebody, they're going to say, we've learned through this, <laughs> we're not in control. We've wanted to control things, our lives, our jobs, our families, whatever that is. We've even wanted to control, in a sense, God. Yeah. We've wanted to control each other. That's a pre-coronavirus perspective. Yeah. A bunch of things that I've heard a lot through all of this coronavirus talk is that every little G God mm -hmm. that we had has been stripped away. Like right. sports, entertainment. Because, I mean, no one's being able to film and then friendship, community, which that sounds weird, but you can also worship your friends. Having that taken away where basically you have your family and God mm -hmm. during this time. And you can still have community, but it's very limit, not limited, but not it's the digi same. It's, it's digital. It's digital. <laughs> it's different. So, and, it's, and it's funny. And I, I think it's funny because you call my generation the digital natives. Right. And so they're starting to realize, oh, shoot, I actually don't like just digital friendships. I was going to ask you that. And it's just, it's crazy because it's, I had a Facebook when I was 10. I had it earlier because I had friends in Argentina and different countries and that's how I talked to them. But I think for the first time we're realizing, oh shoot, I really don't, I don't want to do this digital thing. I, I feel like after all of this, whatever the new normal, whenever we get settled again, right? online relationships are really going to dwindle. It's interesting because, you know, again, your generation is perceived as the digital natives. You've grown up with devices yeah. in your hand or near you. And research shows that in many ways, your relationships, whether they're face to face or digital, there's not much difference for you. But this experience, I think, has opened you up. Mm -hmm. to realizing how important it is to have those face-to-face -face relationships and conversations. You know, yeah. even even the students I had in my class, you know, because they always talk about, oh, education is the new form of education. It's all going to go online. Well, it did. It did, and they don't like it. Yeah. They miss being together. And I think that is a component that is going to shift mindsets. You know, everyone thought, oh, everything's going to go online. Everything's going to go online. And it can, and, it, and we easily made that transition. But at the same time, you want to be together. Yeah physically together in the same room. And it, and it is, and some people struggle. Some students have struggled to make the the adaptation to digital, whereas others thrive in it. So it really depends on the person. Yeah, Your eyes are being opened that maybe this face-to-face -face across the table isn't as bad as I thought. I just miss seeing, like walking around campus and seeing people. So how do you feel that change was just suddenly forced upon you? It didn't kick in for me until maybe two weeks. I think that was the case for many. And as this well, goes on, yeah. the fatigue increases. Those mental health issues start raising their head. Yeah. At first, I was having a rough semester anyway. And so I was kind of like, oh, this is a break that I can take, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I like took the first couple weeks and I was like, oh, this is nice. I can just relax and do all this. And then school started to kick in where I had to start doing community with people. And I was like, shoot, I miss everyone. Mm-hmm. There's no word to describe what it is. It's a mix of emotions of sadness, grieving. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, there's it's a not, grief process It's not there. death grieving, but yeah. loss of plans and opportunities that you had. I still don't know if I'm traveling this summer, and I was super stoked with my new band, and I was sad to miss my last travel date with my old band, and mm -hmm. now I'll never play with those guys probably ever again. And so it's just, it's it's a grieving process and, and it was thrown so quickly and you're like, oh, I don't even know what to do. So the uncertainty of not knowing, of not 
being able to develop a plan and have firm dates. What kind of effect does that have on you? It sucks. <laughs> okay. It sucks so much. Well, it's it's like right now I'm stuck. Mom wants me to, well, you both want me to get a job, but I can't because I technically still have a job right. for the summer, but I don't know if I'm, and not jobs are looking for just a month. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I tried to apply to a job and I was like, hey, I have this job in the summer and we're supposed to start up June 1st, but I have no clue. And it's like, oh, you only want to work in the month of May. And I was like, not e- worth the investment in training you. Yeah. Yeah. It, you feel trapped and stuck. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just sometimes it's just like weighing down and you can't do anything and yep. it sucks. Well, talking about change and the fact that, again, this changes everything, you know, there are two different kinds of change in life. There are those changes that are planned for. You're planning on changing a job. You're planning on perhaps moving to another city. You're prepared for that mentally. But then there's this other change that is unexpected change, and it's a change that's forced upon you by unexpected events or circumstances. This unexpected change is a natural part of life. You know, the reality is nothing lasts forever. If you go back to my philosophy class I took years ago, life is like a river. You step into the river, you're in life. You step out of the river and you step in again. It's different because the river kept going, right? That nothing lasts forever. It's a natural part of life and it's also necessary. It's necessary because change leads us to growth. You experience life, and this helps you experience life in a new way. You acquire wisdom along the way because you now have newfound experiences and knowledge. Now, in the moment, you're probably not thinking about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What am I learning during this time? No, you're not. And you probably can't even tell what you're learning at this time. Well, yeah, you could never. I mean, something I've learned through the 20 years of my life is that you're never going to see what has changed or what you've learned unless you're out of it. So after you'll learn and you'll you'll notice, oh, I did learn that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unexpected change can be dramatic. It can be challenging and it can make you very, very uncomfortable. But it's very beneficial if it's handled thoughtfully. So what we're going to talk about today is dealing with change. If you have a curious mindset and an experimental approach to change, it's going to be a great attitude to have. Unexpected change can transform our life in a dramatic way. This change could require us to develop new habits and routines. That's definitely the case. My schedule, you know, because I've got that schedule color coordinated and everything else, it's completely shifted yeah. and changed. And I had to maneuver well, things Well, I around. mean, even imagine for students right now, especially yeah. I have nothing. I'm trying to find things that I can do. I'm like trying to read a book and I mean, I have church stuff, so that's technically work, but I got nothing. Literally, I was, I was talking with one of my friends and he was like, Hey, do you want to play Xbox? And I was like, sure. And he's like, Oh, I just didn't know if you were free. And I was like, what else, what else do I have to do? (laughs) I have nothing. And he was like, same. (laughs) Not only do you develop new habits and new routines, that also means that you have to let go of the old habits and the old patterns of behavior. There is a tremendous value in unexpected change. You might not see that right now, but there is. You have suddenly, your life is thrown out of balance. And initially, your response is, change is always for the worst. You need to take some time to reflect and look below the surface of the change. Because honestly, benefits of change are, they're going to far outweigh the drawbacks. Unexpected change, one of the benefits is it forces you to grow emotionally and physically. It strengthens your emotional resolve. Do you believe that? Yeah. Makes you stronger emotionally, even though it's tougher at times. It forces you to think differently about events and circumstances of your life. Have your priorities shifted? I think it's become more of intentionality with people. Yeah. I mean, trying to build relationship without seeing people. Yeah. You value relationships more. Well, yeah. Because of this, I think. And I think it also shows which people are there for you Mm -hmm. when they reach out and all this stuff. Unexpected change at times will signal a new beginning. When you have new beginnings, other things must end. That's just the way it happens. What are we going to be focusing on? Are we going to focus on the new beginning and the opportunities and the potential that those opportunities could bring? Or are we going to struggle to accept what we have already lost? When you look at this as a fresh start filled with new opportunities and perspectives, that is the better attitude to take. Unexpected change helps you to develop your resilience and strength of character, forces you into uncomfortable and unfamiliar situations. It encourages you to muster up the strength or the courage that you need to move forward. It's also a catalyst, and I've seen this a lot. 
catalyst for innovation. How are we going to figure this out? I've seen many churches have to do that. Yeah. Oh, we got to figure this out. How are we going to do this? And you get creative and you get innovative and you come up with a new way of doing something. It makes life far more exciting, that's for sure. Imagine you going through your life without any surprises whatsoever. Would you enjoy that? Well, that's what life feels like now, I feel like. You can't, like, expect a surprise because it's just... Or you expect a surprise, rather, you would think, because you don't know what's around the corner. But I think a lot of people, I don't know. For me, I can't speak beyond my entire generation Mm because we're all different. Every time you think that there's going to be a surprise that builds up hope, I hoped that we were going to be done with this May 1st. Yeah. I thought I was going to be able to leave and go do stuff May 1st. But didn't happen. That dwindled very quickly. And I think it's just, we. it's a hopeless time, I feel like, for a lot of people. It's not necessarily a hopeless time. And, and it's unfortunate that the people do feel like that because they're trying to find hope in something else. Yeah. You know, our hope is always in Christ. It is a time of uncertainty. We've been talking in, in a Bible study I've been leading on Zoom, where else, about trust. You know, trusting God during this time. And when we can't lean on our own understanding of this, when we can't lean upon our own way to figure this out, that's when we have to trust. They actually said this past week, students said that it's easier for them to trust in the big things than it is in the little things. Because in the big things of life, they realize it's out of their control. And it's easier to trust. It's in the little things that they think they can control. It's harder to trust. You know, we're always trying to find an unexpected change, that uh, silver lining. We just need to be open to possibilities. We never need to resist this unexpected change, but we need to embrace change and use it to recreate life with purpose. The one thing we can be sure of is life will change. We need to learn to manage unexpected change much more effectively. How do we do that? You have to prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself for change? Mindset. Definitely mental is a part of it. You have to mentally prepare for possible unexpected change. Develop and continuously cultivate courage, curiosity, optimism, gratitude, and creativity. These are habits of your mind that you need to develop. Also, a big one is flexibility. Flexibility for sure. You know, they talk about, they have TV shows about preppers, people preparing for the end of the world, and they've got food prepared and water stored and underground bunkers. And, you know, they're the ones that are like, told you so right now, right? Yeah. And we're seeing more of that. We're seeing more people, more uh, seeds have been bought and gardens are being planted right now than ever before in the last at least 30 years or so. It's important to prepare ourselves for the worst case scenarios. We need to imagine certain possibilities. So to prepare for unexpected change, there are certain questions we have to ask ourselves. How could my life change in the future? Think about your life right now, college student. How could it change? Online, I don't know. Classes all online? Yeah. Yeah, and then the social part of it is like all online as well, and that's tough. No one wants that. How could life change for the better? Another question you can ask yourself. How could it change for the worse? I mean, you're just you're evaluating no. the what ifs. How could these changes be beneficial? It's sort of like those questions I asked at the beginning. What possibilities or what possible opportunities might be unleashed with all of this? And how can I respond to changes when they happen? It's not what happens to you. It's rather how you respond to the unexpected events and circumstances of your life that will make all the difference in the end. So prepare ourselves. Another thing that we need to do with unexpected change is we have to have time to respond. Unexpected change happens suddenly. It reared its ugly head and it took control of your life. That's probably what you're thinking. Now it's time for you to respond in a positive and proactive way. Acknowledge that this change is bringing forth new possibilities and perspectives. It's opening up yourself to new ways of looking at things, even different ways of doing things. And that's what we've been doing. We've, we're looking at what, what are we doing differently today? What are we doing now that just doesn't work anymore? It could bring benefits that you couldn't even have imagined. And responding to this, a good thing to do is pause. Pause for a moment. Take everything in, one breath at a time. You know, the initial reaction is to panic and resist change. That is the most unhelpful thing to do. So stay calm and collected. Think about the long-term big picture of all of this and how this change can be beneficial in the future. So how do we look at the big picture of all this? What exactly is happening? What has changed? What have I lost? What have I gained? And why is this all happening? What am I able to control? How must I adapt? What sacrifices must I potentially make in order to adapt? What positive action could I take right now? So you want to set reasonable expectations for yourself. Be very real and figure out what would be the best course of action moving forward. Another thing we can learn from unexpected change 
is that we need to learn from this experience. Have you thought about what you could learn from this? That I miss my friends? <laughs> How can you continue adapting in the future to ensure that this is a positive change? How do you think this is going to affect the church? You know, we've been producing a church, helping them out because of the, the technology that's needed and filming and editing. How do you think this is going to affect church? I think it'll give it more opportunities to reach the technology age, you know? I, th- mm-hmm. I mean, our church especially. I mean, we're thankful for this because we were trying to go that direction, so this kind of made us put our foot in the door. There's the meme going around where it's like the devil saying, oh, I closed the doors of your church, and then God was like, well, you put a church in every house because yeah. you can watch it. Right. Well, we know we're in this for the long haul. It is fundamentally reshaping not only our institutions, our churches, our economies, our personal lives, and there's no going back. So we are now co-creating what will be normal in the future. I was reading some things specifically thinking about church and that this is going to affect us as, as families. The first thing is doing church online, it's here to stay. It's not going to go anywhere. In fact, there might be people that enjoy doing church online and they're just going to watch it online every yeah. week. So those of you that weren't doing it online before, that are now forced into doing it online, realize that to be truly effective, it's not like, okay, pull the plug on Facebook now, we're going to go back to live church in a building. No, you have to continue doing it online as well. We will still all gather together, we'll gather on Sundays, but we don't know when that's going to happen. You know, here in Illinois, we've got the five phases that our governor has put out there, and phase four is months away, and we can only have groups of 50. So how do we do that? That's a big question, right? I'm just thinking for college. Yeah, because you have chapel. Well, 20, dorms. 2,500. Yeah, dorms, uh, that would be sort of like apartment buildings in, in a sense, in the fact that there are smaller groups of you. But classes that are bigger than 50, yeah. you're going to have to rethink those. Are you going to be wearing masks? More than likely. Yeah. So chapel will probably be online for you, which will be really interesting. Church is going to have to think about switching the way they do things and the fact that You might need a, quote, digital minister. If you have an online campus, you have to have someone who's specifically engaging with that online campus. I know some churches have already hired that direction. Younger generations are going to finally be able to contribute more engaged leadership. True? Do you see that happening? Yeah. Because you're going to get called on more because you understand newer technologies. Another thing I read about was how churches are going to invest more in the local community. You know, social distancing has grounded us in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and we're remembering the value of the community at that point. Actually seeing our neighbors, even though we can't get close to them, saying hi from across the street because we seem to be out more <laughs> Yeah, because we want to get out. So that's community renewal. And we're also seeing the importance of having community spaces. So I think as a church, we'll kind of want to invest more in that. Invest in, hey, do we have enough parks for people to have recreation, community gardens? Yeah. A little bit we've talked about the mental health aspect of all this. And churches will need to step up to provide counselors that work outside of the traditional congregational setting. There's going to be a high demand for those. So we're waking up into a new world, and we have the opportunity to shape the kind of future that we'll create together. We're thoughtful about what next steps happen as we create this new future, but we need to realize that change can be a good thing. Create new habits with your family, create new experiences, focus on what's important. I've always been used to change, so embracing it comes easy to me. You, you grew up in a flexible as a part of the family. Yeah, I think the more we run from it, the more harm it's going to do to us. Be courageous and go right with it. Hopefully this helps you uh, work with your kids in dealing with change and knowing it's inevitable. That's our faith conversation. Time now to move into Music Matters. All right, today on Music Matters, I've got a new song from For King and Country. I think I know it. Have you seen the video for it? Tori Kelly. Tori Kelly, Kirk Franklin, Mm -hmm. choir with it. Of course, the song that came out of COVID-19. That's the thing. Artists are writing new songs out of the experience. Tony Max got releasing like demos. and He's found some old demos. He was cleaning out some office stuff. This is what happens when you're not on the road touring. (laughs) You have time. So a new one from For King and Country. They got, of course, Tori Kelly and Kirk Franklin to help out on this one. It's a song called Together. Give it a listen. It's a 
good song. My song of the week, it's technically a new song as well. Yeah. Because Need to Breathe released a new song. Well, they released like two songs, but it's in like EP and they fit together really well. But I'm going to go on with Hang On by Need to Breathe. So here's a little bit of Hang On by Need to Breathe. So hang on to the light in your eyes and the feeling. Hang on to your love. I just had a Zoom call with them. Yeah. They got new music coming in July to radio. Super excited about that. They had a segment, a Zoom call that was the unmasked singer. So they had, oh my word, they had all of us in the Zoom call, and then they had three people on with masks. And there was one that was an owl, and there was one that was a horse, and then there was one that was a bear. Bear's his first name. Bear right? is his first name. Yeah, how appropriate. Good deal. I, I like that song. Okay, now it's time to go back in time for our oldie but goldie. <laughs> So I'm going back to the year you were born. Hey. 1999. What time? I don't know what month it was. You were born in December, so more than likely this came out before before you were born. Switchfoot. Nope. I thought this was an appropriate song for the theme of the program that this changes everything. This was a song that I love. I think it's a great one. New Way to Be Human. Mm. Like that song? Remember yeah, that song? I do. Yeah. Now, of course, they're talking about a new way of being human, of accepting Christ, becoming a new creation. Yeah. But, hey, guess what? Change is all about a, becoming a, a new way to be human. And yeah. we're all learning how to be new ways, new ways to be human today. So here's Switchfoot from 1999, New Way to Be Human. Great song. I love that song. It's also just a great year, you know. A lot of good things came out of that year, especially me. Uh, uh. Well, that wraps up Music Matters. And now moving into Culture Shock. Culture Shock. We, uh, of course, want to highlight some people that are making a difference in the kingdom by shaping culture. So we, we talk about different people, and I don't think we've ever talked about this guy. DMX. Do you know DMX, the rapper? No. You're not in the rap scene? Not really anymore. Oh. Unless they're with, like, Reach Records. Right. Well, this is a, this is a mainstream rapper. Oh. Yeah. 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 Not really into that kind of rap scene. He actually led recently an Instagram Bible study. Really? Yeah. Urging his fans to give their life to Jesus. 14,000 plus were watching this Instagram Bible study. Wow. And he says, time to get in the word. Uh, DMX, his real name is Earl Simmons, rose to fame in the 90s and 2000s, two American Music Awards, three Grammy nominations. He's now 49. So he read in this Bible study from Ecclesiastes. You're younger than you. Uh, thank you. Ecclesiastes. Okay. And this is what he said. The best thing we can hope for, the most important thing we can hope or pray or ask for is that our desires coincide with God's will. At one point he read Ecclesiastes 3.5. There will be a time of embracing and a time for avoiding embraces and paused to reflect on the modern-day parallel to the pandemic. He went on to urge fans to learn to pray and not rely on the prayers of others. He says, your own prayer will do a lot better than someone else praying for you. He spoke about the current uh, quarantine that we're in. God is giving you time to get closer to Him. And he encouraged the people watching to receive Christ. Whoever hasn't given your life to Jesus yet, whoever hasn't surrendered all the way, I'm going to walk you through that right now. And he led his fans in a prayer. God put it on my heart, he says. This is the new me. This is not what I do. By not living for Christ, he says, people miss out on so many blessings that he has for you. He says, get into the word. It will make whatever you go through a lot easier to deal with. So Instagram live video, over 14,000 plus watching rapper DMX. That's awesome. Isn't that great? Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Faith, there's a lot of interest right now with what's going on. More Bibles have been sold in the last two months than the previous three years. Wow. Wow. And where people are going with church online now, where you normally might have your church a couple hundred people attending, now more than a thousand people are watching your service. So yeah. definitely some things out there and people making a difference in culture, and that's what Culture Shock is all about. Well, thanks for tuning in uh, to this episode of The Kitchen Table. We appreciate you uh, listening every week. We hope that this topic of change, especially during this time, uh, something that you can possibly talk to your kids about because, uh, let's face it, life has changed a lot and how we can be open to change and have the courage to embrace change and learn out of the experience. Yeah, and if you want to connect, carry on the conversation, you can go to that through our Facebook page 
And you can find it under the Shine.fm Facebook page, and then you go to the group tab. You should see the kitchen table group, and there we'll continue on the conversation of faith, and then we can also talk about music and difference makers in our cultures. All right, well, thanks for tuning in this week. Have a wonderful week, and we'll talk to you soon. Stay salty and lit and wash your hands. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table on the Shine.fm Podcast Network from Olivet Nazarene University. Be sure to subscribe for more content delivered each week on faith, music, and culture.